Just watch yourself, honey. You never know what might happen. should have called. I would have had the maid in. I did call. Your phone's been disconnected. I was wondering why I hadn't heard from the collection agencies lately. How long have you been living in your office? Oh, I don't know. A couple of weeks. God. Don't worry, sis. Just, uh, it's just temporary. I guess they're gonna throw me out of here, too. <laughs> You're worse, Perry. A lot worse. Yeah, but come on, Chris. What's up? You, you, you didn't come all the way across the bay just to call me a drunk. You're my brother. I was scared when I couldn't reach you. I mean, it's been so long since I've seen you. It hasn't been that long. A year. Can't be a year. The last time you were at my house for dinner was a year ago. The last time we talked on the phone was at least six months ago. And what about all those messages I left on your stupid machine? Okay, okay, all right. Okay, okay, all right. So let things slide a little, huh? Last time I was out there, I didn't exactly cover myself with glory with your family. Lord, thank you, God. I'm sorry, I'd offer you a drink. There's not enough. Can't you see what you're doing to yourself? I got the best seat in the house. I don't get it, Perry. I mean, you saw what Dad did to himself, to Mom, to us, and you were doing exactly the same thing. I just don't understand. Chris, Chris, do me a favor. Will you stop moving around, okay? Please? Sit down. All right, what's the problem? I'm leaving Ed. What? I said, I'm leaving Ed. Are you crazy? Oh, thanks for understanding. Look at what he's the best thing that ever happened to you. I mean, he, he's, a, he's, he's a decent, hard-working guy. Hell, hell, he even gets along with me. You, 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 you've got two kids. I am not leaving my kids. <sighs> Christine, a marriage is like yours. They write him up in magazines. They did write it up. Yeah, they wrote him up. Man of the year, three years ago. <laughs> well... 
This was a waste of time. Oh, hey, Chris, honey, you, you come in here, you tell me that you're leaving your husband, Mr. Wonderful. You're going to wreck your life, you're going to screw up your kids. What the hell do you expect me to do, stand up and cheer? You can listen. <sighs> Yeah, look, I'm all ears, but not now. I gotta be in court at nine o'clock. It's ten now, Perry. It's five after. It's not. Don't tell me that. Oh, God, not again. I... I tell you that the woman can't get along with a guy like Ed Biondi. A guy like Ed Biondi. Hey, hey, he's a terrific guy. Ask anybody. Try asking his wife. Yeah. All right. So what is it? Is he? Has he got a girlfriend? I think so. I don't know. Will you listen to yourself? You don't even know when you're going to leave him. That's not why. All right, then why? Huh? Why? What is he? He turned into a monster all of a sudden? He beats you? Yes. He's on drugs. Amphetamines. I'm scared, Perry. I'm really scared, and the kids are terrified. He's not hitting the kids, is he? Everything but. Zach has nightmares. Linda's so frightened of him that she takes his side on everything. I don't know what to say. Oh, hey, Mr. Garabedian, hey, I'm glad I caught you. Caught me? It's over. You know, here, judge, throw me away. No, 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 look, that's a blessing, you see. No, listen ah. to me. That judge was not the right guy for us. This way we get to go to another court. Other lawyer, no other court. That's what I get. You don't want to start all over again with another lawyer? Look, I'm ready for trial right now. Mr. Big Dog Lawyer, but you know in court, up you, Mr. Big Dog Lawyer. Uh, listen, I had some out-of-pocket expenses. Mr. Garabini. Hear that? Huh? Up you. You ought to be a law. We don't let them curse until they can speak the language. Hey, what do you say I take my kid's sister to lunch? I'm oh, straight I, around, I, huh? I can't, Perry. I've got to get back. I've got to pick up the kids. Christine, uh... Spare me a hundred. Just till I get paid. Do you have any other clients, do you? Oh, come on. That's not a problem. Hey, this is America. Everybody sues everybody else. Yeah, I'll give you the hundred. And I'm going to write you a check. Pay your rent and your phone bill. I want to be able to reach you. If you need any more, I want you to call me, okay? Left court in? Yeah, he's in. Never mind, I'll find him. Mr. Seinquist is coming through. Now, don't worry about security. I'll take care of it. Could you give me five minutes, please? Uh, look, uh, uh, Perry, how you doing? I've only got a minute. Yeah, yeah, that is it. You know about this? Of course, I know about it. I'm on the committee. Yeah, I get suspended from the bar, and my ex-partner can't pick up the phone and give me a call. I tried to call you. Your phone's out of order or something. What the hell's going on here? Anyway, they, they suspend me. I don't even get a hearing. Do you read your mail? We scheduled five hearings you never showed. We never heard from you. If it was you, Robert, I'd have found a way. It's not me. It would never be me. That's why we're not partners anymore. There are rules, okay? Lawyers live by rules. You fail to appear in court three times. You show up for trial drunk. I wasn't drunk. You weren't sober. Fuck, all right. I made some mistakes. I didn't. 
Like it won't happen again. It happened this morning, Perry. Believe it or not, we're trying to help you. Take some time off. Pull yourself together. You'll be back in business. It was time I come out and see my niece and my nephew and my little sister. Will you stay for dinner? I sure will. Has anything happened? No, everything's fine. Where are the kids? They're out back. Come on. Oh, they're going to be thrilled. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey, 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 hey. There he is. <laughs> this is Zach. That's his friend Tommy. I know, I know. I mean, I didn't think you had three. Linda, say hi to Uncle Perry. Hey, Linda. Hey, do you think a fat old man could get up there in that treehouse? Huh? I don't think so. You don't think so? Let's go find out. Okay. Hey, honey. Did Daddy know he was coming? You know, if you pulled some of this hair up off that beautiful face that I love, you could you see You better more. tell him, Mom. Hello, it's me. I'm in the kitchen. Whose car is that in the driveway? <laughs> hey, there's your daddy. Hey, Perry. <laughs> you old son of a gun. What are you doing here? I thought you were allergic to fresh air. Yeah. <laughs> How's your practice? My practice? Yeah. I, I don't need to practice anymore, Ed. I know how to do it just fine. <laughs> <laughs> right? Right? <laughs> right? 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 Here he is. <laughs> The kids are really great about taking care of the horses, too. Yeah, good. It's great. Perry, you don't have to sound interested. That's not why I actually brought you out here. I want you to tell me the truth. Did she ask you to come? Truthfully, no. No, she didn't. I was just feeling kind of lonely. Uh-huh. But she came to see you in the city, right? Yeah. But... <laughs> All right. Let me lay it out for you. She's been having some real problems. Did she talk to you about that? Well, she mentioned some problems. Well, I might not be the most attentive husband, but I am a doctor. Wait, wait, wait. What are you talking about? Christine. She's been taking pills, Perry. And I don't quite know how to say this, but I think there's a predisposition in that way, if you know what I mean. I mean, your father and... Me? Well, yeah. And look at her. The mood swings, she's paranoid, she's afraid of her own shadow. I think it's amphetamines. She said you were taking amphetamine. Well, of course she did. That's textbook. She really needs help, Perry. You know, to tell you the truth, I'm very glad that you're here because the fact that she's come to you, it's a very good sign. Kind of like the blind leading the blind, huh? Thanks for dinner. Thanks for coming. I think everything's gonna be just fine. I don't think so. Listen, my phone's back on, so stay in touch. And, uh, Christine, get rid of the gun, all right? 
That's not going to solve any problems. It's first degree, premeditated in cold blood, and I think we can get it. You really going for the max? You think just because I'm a woman, I go soft on her? She gets no favors. Dr. Ed Biondi took care of a lot of children in this town, and I'm here to make sure his killer pays. Excuse me, Miss Cardi, is it true you're going to ask the judge for the death penalty? Excuse me, please. Henry. Henry. How are you doing, Dana? How am I doing? Look, is this right? You filed an appearance in Biondi? I've represented them for a number of years. She called. She didn't have anywhere else to turn. This isn't a closing on a house, Henry. I'm going for murder one here. I don't want any appeals problems. I want her to have a proper defense. I absolutely agree. <laughs> Your Honor, we're dealing here with a premeditated murder of one of the most respected men in our community. Under the circumstances, $500,000 is not excessive bail. Mrs. Biondi has no criminal record. She has a home here, two children. The defendant's only tie to the community was her husband's medical practice. It's summer, the children aren't in school. There's nothing to keep her from taking them. All right, that's enough. Bail is set at $500,000. That's it? I don't have that kind of money. Why didn't you say anything? Christine, I've known you for years, been to your house for dinner. What could I say? Make a great legal lamb? Oh, you're my lawyer. How can you talk to me like that? Just for the bail hearing, and that's over. Ed was a very good friend of mine. <sighs> Christine, I'm sorry. Believe me, I'm not the right man for this case. You need a good criminal attorney. I'll make some calls. But, but they're just going to keep me here. Who's going to take care of Zach and Linda? Well, they're with a neighbor, aren't they? Would you like me to call child welfare? No, stay away from my children. If you're not going to help me, just leave us alone. All right, what do you say? Come on, Perry, give me a break, huh? Mm -hmm. Let's go. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay, I'm going. Okay. No, 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 no,
is supposed to be your lawyer? He's also my brother. Look, they know me at reception. Just check up there, okay? It's fine. They said my lawyer's here. I don't know. I can't So you have a lawyer. Well, that's a start. No, I don't have a lawyer, Perry. And the judge said bail a half a million dollars. Well, so what? You only need 10 percent. You go to a bail bondsman. You sign some paper. Somebody like you, there's no problem. I don't have anything. They what? froze our assets. The car, the house. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. The, the, the Are they charging accounts? you with first degree? They're denying you access to, to your property. All right, tell me the whole story, right from the beginning. Now, what the hell happened? I, I don't I was, I was scared. I had the gun. You were scared, so you killed him. What were you thinking about, Christine? I wasn't thinking. I didn't plan it. I, I, I... I saw the gun, Christine. You had a gun in your purse. A woman like you. I hated that gun, but I was desperate. I had to protect myself and my kids. Well, you sure as hell did that, didn't you, huh? What a mess. You, of all people, had it together. I mean, you meet a nice guy, he takes you away from that rat hole that we were dragged up in, you build a decent life, and then you blow the whole damn thing. What were you taking, anyway? What? Look, you were taking pills. What were they? I wasn't taking anything. Look, there's nobody here, all right? Now, you have to tell me the truth. That is the truth! Look, I know that game, Christine, okay? I learned it from the old man, and I learned it real Look, good. I don't know what I told you, but I told you he was taking pills. Yeah, okay? right, yeah. I thought you wanted to hear the truth. I want to hear the truth. Tell me the truth. It was the night you were there. No, don't tell me about the night I was there. I was there that night. I want to hear why you shot and killed your husband. That is part of it, Perry! You want to hear the truth? That is the truth! All right, go on, talk. Go ahead. <sighs> it was after you left. And then, uh, the kids were asleep. And I was doing the dishes. Well, at least Linda's asleep. I told Zach, I'm off duty. If he calls again, he'll get a busy signal. He's wound up. I don't understand why they make these summer vacations so long. It's a test of character for their mothers. What was Perry doing here? I told you, he just came out. You went to see him? Told him we had problems? He came to check them out? I don't need him spying on us, Christine. He wasn't spying. He's my brother. Not to worry, sweetie. I straightened him out. I knew where he was going. Maybe I should have just left it alone. My name? Huh? What are these? Don't you see what's happening to you? If you ever do that to me again, I'll kill you. If I ever get you spying on me again, you'll die. Uh, honey, you you need help. You can get out. Uh, uh. Nothing wrong with me. Hey, no! Bitch, I look hey! well. Suck this is crazy! No, baby, no. This is just a warning. Next time. Base of the neck. Wouldn't even feel it. This time nothing happened. You just watch it. You watch it. I locked myself in the bedroom. I was terrified.
You only remember him the way he used to be. He wasn't the same man anymore. I was there that night. Remember, Christine? I saw him. You didn't live with him. You didn't see what the drugs did to him. He pulled a knife on me, Perry. He did. And it wasn't the first time. You got any witnesses? No, of course not. Hey, I checked at reception. You're not her lawyer. You're just her brother. Yeah, look, just give me a few more minutes, all right? Well, why don't you come back during regular visiting hours tomorrow? Kids, do they hear anything? No. Are you sure? Did you ask them? They didn't see or hear anything, okay? I'm not dragging them through this. I, I did report it to the police. Well, that's a start. I'll check it out. I'll be back as soon as I can. Yeah, she came in with a complaint. Uh, seemed like an all right lady. A little high strung, maybe. No marks on her, though. Then it hits me. <laughs> this is Doc Biondi's wife. Yeah, I see. she's married to a doctor. Does that mean he can't belt her around a little? Well, no, I mean, this isn't just any doctor. I mean, everybody knows him. He's a great guy. All right, so what did you do? So we checked it out. With Dr. Biondi. <laughs> well, who else? Look, it's all right here. The nurse took us back to see him. Dr. Biondi asked for you to come in. Thank you. And this fella is a very healthy little man, Mrs. Armstead. Willie, grab both my fingers, squeeze as hard as you can. Oh, oh, hi. Uh, I, oh, hi. Look, I'm sorry, I didn't realize you had a patient. Uh, look, doctor, when you have a few minutes, we'll... Oh, I don't have a few minutes. You saw the waiting room. What can I do for you? Well, look, uh, it's kind of personal. Willie and I can wait if... No, that's okay. Doctor-patient privilege. Works both ways. Well, your wife came in to see us. And she's a little concerned about our safety. Some violence with a... I think we uh, better discuss this in private. No. Cat's kind of out of the bag already, isn't it? Did she say I hit her? An incident with a... with a knife. Willie, you just follow the light, okay? Good boy. Yeah, it's a kukri. A what? A kukri. It's a um, gurkha knife. It's from Nepal. I've been restoring the handle. Good boy. Good. She says that... I know what she says. Your name is Rick Thorne, right? Your niece is uh, Carla. Trouble with her tonsils? Boy, they must be hurting now, huh? Okay, listen. Stay off the dairy products for a couple of weeks and come see me, all right? Here, put this on. Try it on. The thing about Christine, she's been having some very serious problems lately, and I've begged her to see someone. You hear anything? No. Huh? It's substance abuse. She doesn't require hospitalization at this point, but it may come to that. Okay. No problem, Doctor. You understand we had to check it out. Excuse me, Doctor. Let me get this straight. You're telling us she made all this up? Oh, no, no. I'm not telling you that at all. In her mind, it absolutely happened. So that's it, and that's how you investigate a wife beating complaint? You ask the husband? Look, pal, we get a lot of these things, all right? Some of them are legitimate and some of them aren't. And you make a professional judgment. Now, you want to make something of that? Fine. All right, look, all I'm trying to do is, is, is to find out what's behind this thing. Well, I'll tell you what's in front of it. She's left standing and he ends up dead on arrival. But maybe that shows how scared she was. No, not to us. See, Dr. B was a good guy. I mean, he was about as scary as, as Mr. Rogers. Your partner was with you, right? All right, where can I find him? Right behind you. You got anything you want to add to this, Detective? Uh... Yes. Yeah, she seemed really scared to me. I thought she was telling the truth. But? But uh, there was a determination made that there was no foundation to her charges. Am 
All right, so what changed your mind? Well, maybe it was the fact that she shot him dead that changed our minds. <laughs> See, that's just the point. I mean, if she was terrified of him, right? Physically terrified, that would explain why she shot him. Oh, no, no. It was a cold-blooded murder, counselor. All right? It was an ambush. She was lying in wait. How do you know that? Well, how do we know it? Well, the nurse. What, what was her name? Brady. Dolores Brady. She told us the whole story. But the nurse was there? Was the nurse there? <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Where have you been, son, Krista? Huh? On the dark side of the moon? I mean, don't you watch TV or read a paper? Have you even talked to your sister, for God's sake? Can you believe this guy? He doesn't have a clue. All right, uh, come on. Just spill it, all right? Your sister shot both of them, counselor, all right? She tried to kill both Dr. Biondi and his nurse, Dolores Brady. Only she just wounded the nurse who's alive and kicking and anxious to testify. I don't know how to thank you for taking the kids like this. I mean, I don't know what we would have done without you. It's nothing. How are they doing anyway? Well, the father was practically killed in front of them, and their mother's in jail. I, I'd say that could be hard for a child to adjust to. When you say that uh, he was killed practically in front of them... They're not witnesses, if that's what you mean. They were with me. We heard the shots. Well, they must have known something was going on in that house. I... The kids... They knew there was tension. They know they're confused. Hey, guys. Hey, how you doing? Listen, I'm gonna go see your mom. Is there anything you want me to tell her? No. Uncle Perry? Yeah, Zach. Is she gonna come home? Are they okay? How do they seem? They're fine. They, they send their love. Linda? Linda's gonna be okay. She just needs some time. It's so unfair. He turned her against me, and now I don't know if I'll ever get her back. Yeah, look, you, you can't worry about that right now, okay? First things first. Why didn't you tell me that you shot the nurse, too? You didn't know? I'm sorry, Perry. I just assumed that... Okay, okay, okay. It's my fault. Talk to a lawyer. Yeah, I've talked to four of them. Great, great. Who do you like? None of them. They all say I should plead guilty. Yeah, sure, but can they get a reduced charge? No, the only deal the prosecutor will accept is a guilty plea to first-degree murder, then no death penalty. Oh, God, that's 25 to life. Maybe she sweetens it a little. You do 15 to 17. I, I, I tell you, it's, it's better than the gas chamber. Perry, look, I shot him. I know I'll have to go to jail, but I swear to you, it wasn't what they're saying. It wasn't like, like, like I planned it. Premeditated. The word is premeditated. The other word is murder. That's what they're saying. The reason they're saying it is because you were waiting outside with a gun in your hand. You were lying in wait. No, I wasn't. Well, the nurse says you were. She's going to be a well, hell of a witness. she is lying. Why would anybody listen to her anyway? I mean, she was there in my home when I walked in with Linda. I found them together. All right, so you knew that they were sleeping together. <sighs> How long did you know that? I... I, I don't know. I, I guess in my heart I, I knew it for a while. Well, well, because when you came to my office, you said you didn't know for sure. But now you say you did, huh? She was in my house, damn it. She was in her underwear. Well, you should have shot him then, because we could have gotten manslaughter. <sighs> Don't you see, Chris? I mean, if you could prove self-defense, hell, any decent lawyer could get you off. And you, you come home, and you find your husband there with another woman, okay? She's in her underwear, so you have an argument. Now, you leave the house. You're outside for what, what, 15 minutes waiting, right? No. Until they get dressed, and they come no. out of the house, and you shoot them both no. for an ambush. No, That's no. murder, Why all right? That's to murder. Me? Why won't anybody listen to me? Couldn't somebody just listen to me? Why won't anybody listen to me? Why won't anybody listen to me? Couldn't somebody just listen to me? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You don't even know how it happened. All right. I'm listening. I took the kids to the water park that morning with Fran and her son. Ed and I hadn't been sleeping in the same room since he attacked me that night. When I left the house, he wasn't up yet. And when he's okay? Can you talk to him then? I used to try. As soon as I saw he was in a good mood. He said he didn't know what I was talking about. What are you going to do, Christine? You can't just go on like this. 
Maybe it's me. Everyone thinks I'm married to the most wonderful man in the world. You only have to look at those kids' eyes to know that's not true. You're frightened too, Chris. Early. Not especially. And then to go over to France. It's okay, I'm just right now and wait there until I come for you. Damn it, we have to talk. There's nothing to talk about. You open it or I will now! <laughs> oh, hiding something, are we? Uh, huh? Where is it? Where's the gun? I, I don't have a gun. I don't. I don't. <laughs> yes, you do. Somewhere. No, no. No. Huh? I wouldn't. You wouldn't. No, you wouldn't. You couldn't. You couldn't pull the trigger. But I could. I turn that little pop gun of yours around, and everybody would think suicide. Poor little Christine. I had to get out of there. Ed was acting crazy. I was scared for the kids. The gun was in my purse. Going someplace, Christine? So where are you going? Huh? Just leave me alone. What do you got there? Don't come any closer, Ed. What, are we supposed to be afraid? What are you going to do, shoot me? I will. I will. Stay there. And please stay right there. 22, right? You think you can actually stop me with a 22? Do you, Christine? Ed, you can stop me? Huh? Stop. Huh? Do you stop. think so? Stop! 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 Oh. stop. Shut up. You little bitch. Stop. That's it. Stop. Please stop. No. 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 You killed him. You killed him. Police, and I told him what happened. 
And one of them said he thought it was self-defense. He was very nice. And then the other one said I was under arrest for murder. I, I, I just don't get it. I mean, he, he had just attacked you, right? He, he was coming after you again. That's self-defense. I mean, why the hell are they going for murder one? I don't know. But if you're lying to me, Chris, if this isn't the whole story... He caught me by surprise, and he just kept coming. You have to help me. Oh, of course I'm going to help you. I, I, I know some very good people. You mean another lawyer? No. I've talked to lawyers, Perry. They don't believe me, and they don't care about me. You're my brother. I want you. Oh, come on. I'm not up to something like this. I haven't been for some time. I'm a drunk. Look, you've said so yourself, repeatedly. <laughs> last night thinking about my 12th birthday party remember dad got crazy drunk and all of a sudden he was hitting me for no reason and you jumped in and started fighting him mm, yeah and then he slapped me around for a while <laughs> you were so brave my big brother yeah you don't believe me do you i didn't say that well then say it come on out and say it look whether i believe you or not chris is not the point. Well, that's not the point. What is the point? I've been suspended. They suspended me from the bar for, for drunkenness. So I can't practice law. Well, it's a lucky break for you. It saves you from having to walk out on me. You're her lawyer, aren't you? <laughs> well, I'm a lawyer. I'm also her brother. It's, I'm just trying to find out, you know, exactly what happened that day. You know what I mean? You just... I don't want to talk to you. Uh, Miss, Miss Brady, I'm just trying to find out the truth. I told everything to the police. Ask them. I'm not helping her. Is there some reason why you think the truth might help my sister? All right. You want to know what happened? I'll tell you. Just like I told them. I was in the kitchen with Dr. Biondi. We had a cup of coffee. She was waiting for us when we came out the door, just waiting there with her gun. She shot me the minute I stepped outside the door. After she shot Dr. Biondi. Is that what she's saying? That's a lie. She shot me first. You were trying to get the gun away from her. No, sir. I wasn't anywhere near her. When I stepped outside the door, she was waiting there and she shot me. Ed came out, he tried to talk to her, and that's when she shot him. Christine. She kept shooting until she was sure he was dead. That's what I told the police, that's what I'll tell the jury, and that's what I'll tell you when you cross-examine me. Now, what are your other questions? I'm Dana Cartier. Yeah, I know. How'd you know me? I saw you close in the Cunningham case. I never forgot it. Oh, really? Well, thank you. It was a while ago. I, look, I know you're busy. I, I'm Christine Biondi's brother. I know. And you're doing some preliminary investigation for her. At least, I think it's preliminary, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, I've been suspended, so... I know that, too. What did you want to ask me, Mr. Sunquist? Yeah, well, uh, Miss Cartier, It's I... Mrs. 
Really? Oh, right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Mrs. Cartier. Uh, Christine's got no record. Yeah, I mean, she's a housewife. She's got a couple of kids. No history of violence there, but... Well, you're going for first degree. I, I don't understand that. I think the jury will understand. She left the house, she got a gun, she lay in wait for her husband and his mistress, and she shot them both in cold no, blood. But you're not charging her with shooting Brady. I like to keep things simple for the jury, Mr. Sunquist. She killed her husband. In self-defense. I mean, he'd attacked her once, he was coming at her again. You talked to Miss Brady, is that what she said? <laughs> she was beyond his mistress. I mean, she's hardly an objective witness. She slept with him, Mr. Sunquist. Your sister killed him. Who would you believe? Uh, Miss Cartier, I want to defend my sister. You're suspended, Mr. Sunquist. Yeah, but you could fix that up with the judge. I mean, at least for this trial. You know, the family angle. I let you represent your sister. She's convicted, of course. And the conviction gets thrown out on the grounds of inadequate and incompetent legal representation. The defendant's lawyer was a drunk who was suspended by the bar. Your sister walks. Maybe she's retried, maybe not. Is that the plan, Mr. Sundquist? <sighs> That's a hell of an idea. I wish I thought of it. You did think of it. I'll tell you what. I'll sign some kind of waiver, uh, releasing you from uh, responsibility if I screw it up. That would be hard evidence of incompetent counsel, Mr. Sundquist. All right, come on, lady. Look, you want your boss's job? That's your business. But you want to put my sister away for life to get it. That becomes my business, all right? Look, we both know she's got no chance. Hell, she knows it. All she wants... All she wants is somebody in there who cares about her. Somebody who'll fight for her. And she deserves that, at least. All right, I'll do it. I'll see you in court, and you better be good. By the way, get a different breath freshener. That one's not working. Mother of God, what have I done? So, actually, it's very simple. Without any corroborating evidence, and we don't have any, <laughs> it's Christine's word against the nurse. It's whoever the jury believes. I could testify. I mean, the things she used to tell me, how abusive he could be. Yeah, see, that's just the point. She told you these things. Yeah, it's hearsay. It's inadmissible evidence. You never actually saw him do anything to her, right? Never. And it was a great guy. I liked him myself. I mean, if what she's saying is true, it's like he was two different people, and no one besides Christine ever saw the other one. Except maybe the kids. Yeah. Which is why I'm here. Hey, tell me. Do you want to come outside with me? I need your help. Yeah, we're supposed to clean up the room. No, no, no. no. Hold, hold, hold on just a second, okay? But Fran asked us to go clean Fran up. took Tommy out of here so that we would have a chance to talk. I just don't want to talk about any of this. Linda, I know that this is difficult, but your mommy's in very big trouble. She killed Daddy. That's why she's in so much trouble. She's in jail and she's never going to come home. I don't want to talk about her and I don't want to think about her. Come on, Zach. Uncle Perry. Come on, Zach. I just wanted Will to... Will you come on? Linda, just... what's the matter with you? Let him talk. What is it, Zach? What's the matter, Zach? You... You wanted to tell me something. What did you want to tell me? I loved lounges. You know what I mean? Cocktail lounges, real dark, lots of leather and mirrors, very cool and sophisticated, and me throwing up in the men's room. I used to tell people I was a lawyer, an attorney. Very impressive, very effective, too, because most people in saloons need a lawyer. <laughs> I want to thank the program for my sobriety. Let's close with the serenity prayer. God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and wisdom to know the difference. Hey, hey, remember me, Harry Sunquist. I wonder if I could have a minute. Yeah, how'd you know I was here? I asked them down at the station. Oh. Maybe we could get out of here, get a, get a cup of coffee or something, please. Say. <laughs> yeah, well, there's no more or something for me, Sunquist. you know what I mean? Yeah. So, uh, all right, what can I do for you? 
Look, I, uh, I may be off base here, but uh, I, I got the feeling that, well, that you weren't very comfortable with this investigation. Yeah, that's right. You're off base. Oh, look, come on. You, to you talked to my sister. You said you believed her. Yeah, that's right. She seemed very truthful. It was just a feeling I had. I didn't have all the facts. Yeah, you mean Dolores Brady's facts? Look, a decision was made about the focus of that investigation. I didn't make that decision. Come on. My sister's whole life is going down the tubes, and she's got two little kids. And I'm fighting the DA's office. I'm fighting the police department. I'm fighting the press. I'm fighting this whole town. I got nothing to fight with. I need some help. You're gonna defend her? Yeah, the DA is reinstating me for the trial. All right, listen to me and listen close. You've gotta look at the whole investigation, you understand me? The whole investigation. And stay off the sauce. Might try to come to one of these meetings. Hey, thanks. Hi. Come on over here. Sign your name. What is it? Well, you want to go home, don't you? How did you do no, don't, 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 don't look at me. I didn't do it. Fran and her husband, they put up their house as collateral. Oh, my God. That's it. Thank you very much. Let's keep moving. Here she comes. Attention all prisoners. Visiting hours are over in 15 minutes. Visiting hours are over in 15 minutes. Come here, you. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. My sweetie. My sweetie. Thank you, Fran. <laughs> you would have done the same for us. Can we go home now, Mommy? Oh, what a good idea, sweetheart. I'll get the car. Boy. You know, Perry, I was so mad at you. I, I'm sorry. I never should have doubted you. Yeah, well. Before you get all teary, I wait till you see your family room. I, uh, I've been camping out there for a couple of weeks. Very nice. Oh, well, don't touch a thing, all right? I know exactly where everything is. The important thing is that you believe me. Well. I got a lot of work to do. I'm going to get ready for trial. Huh? to the knife what you said that he he came at you with a with a big knife a machete right all right there's nothing downstairs hanging over the fireplace except an empty sheath now what happened to the knife i don't know it was gone maybe was Ed... there a knife christine was there ever really a knife look i'm gonna defend you no matter what but you gotta start telling me the truth huh damn it perry there was no knife was there you made all that up didn't you he attacked me with that thing I thought if I had a gun, I would be safe. I just... I just wanted to be safe. I wanted my children to be safe. All right. You wanted to be safe. Because he had a knife. So where's the knife? What difference does it make? 
I killed him, okay? I didn't want to, but I did. And now it's the people versus Christine Biondi. I should have just let him kill me. I don't think that's a good idea. It is a good idea. I want to see what happened. Sweetie, you've been through so much, and it's going to be a long trial. Well, look, we both know how hard this how is. How would you know? My father said, and now my mommy's going to be gone, too. Honey, I'm not going anywhere. You're not? Who's going to defend you? Him? Yes, ma'am. She came into the station, said she wanted to file a complaint against her husband for assault. Did you see, or did she offer to show you, any evidence of physical injury as the result of the alleged assault? No, ma'am. Detective Thorne, what, if anything, did you do as a result of this complaint? Well, my partner and I proceeded to the husband's place of work, a clinic, where we questioned Dr. Biondi. What, if anything, did you learn from Dr. Biondi? He informed us that his wife had been having a problem with drugs and that he wanted... Mr. Sundquist? Yes, Your Honor. This is hearsay, Mr. Sundquist. If you're not going to object, then I'll have to. <clears throat> yes, Your Honor. Thank you. Objection. Sustained. Uh, thanks, thanks. <laughs> Not going very well, is it? Oh, we're holding our own. You couldn't hold your ass with both hands. Look, you said look at the whole investigation. Right? I have been over every single police report. I cannot find a damn thing. All right, what are you saying? I'm missing something. You didn't miss a thing? Well, if there's nothing to miss... There's nothing. That's it, isn't it? There was no investigation. That's right. I'll give you an example. The autopsy. Your sister said the doc was on drugs. The medical examiner found some kind of pills in his stomach. They could have been amphetamines. They could have been something else. The point is, the medical examiner didn't analyze them. But why? Because everybody wants this thing all wrapped up. They got the nurse's story, case closed. Keep everything nice and simple for Cartier's election campaign. But you don't think it's that simple? I've seen better investigations on a panty raid. I don't know what would have happened if we investigated. The thing is, I don't like not knowing. Listen to me, Sunquist. Your sister's getting the shaft. The police department, the DA's office, they all made up their minds and went home. And you, you never even showed up. I'll make you a deal, if you're ready to listen. I'm listening. Yeah? You switch to milkshakes. I'll try and help you out. What's your angle in this thing, anyway? Well, let's just say you and I have been down some of the same kind of roads. You know what I mean? Hmm. Maybe I'll see you at one of those meetings, huh? I think she's across the street, a friend. Why isn't she here? Where is she? Did you hurt my mommy? Hey, hey, hey. No, of course not. It's all right, Zach. She's fine. Hey. I wouldn't hurt your mommy. She's my sister. I, I, I love her very much. Why didn't Daddy love Mommy? 
I, I think that he did love your mommy, Zach. Then why did he hurt her? sick. I mean, he, he didn't mean to hurt your mommy. But he did. Yeah, I guess he did. Uh, listen, Zach, maybe you'd feel better if you, if you talk about it. Do you want to talk about it? I don't want to talk anymore. I want to go to sleep now. Can I sleep down here with you? right here, okay? Put your head right down there. You go to sleep. I'll just sit here till you fall asleep, all right? Mm-hmm. Okay? Okay. Detective Ayers. Ma'am. Do you find this trial particularly interesting? No, it's just curious, I guess. You've been meeting with Perry Sunquist. Is this case still under investigation? I'm just trying to clear up a few loose ends. We're on trial. You work for the prosecution and your work is over. Let's be clear on that. I don't work for you, ma'am. You know, Ayers, you should have been thrown out of the department years ago. You were a falling down drunk, a disgrace to your family, your job, and yourself. The only reason you still have a badge is because we all agreed to give you a second chance to stay on the team. Are you a team player, Ayers? Or should we reevaluate that decision? Ma'am, I was just trying to. The do investigation my... is closed. You're 18 months from your pension. It'd be a shame to lose that now, wouldn't it? talked for a while. Dr. Biondi came back into the kitchen. A few minutes later, Mrs. Biondi went out the back door. And what did you do? We had another cup of coffee. And then we left. How long after Mrs. Biondi left until you left Miss Brady? I would say 20 minutes. Maybe a half an hour, but 20 minutes for sure. You came out right after I did. Right after. Tell us what happened then. She was just waiting there. Waiting by the trunk of her car. She had a gun in her hand. She shouted something. She swore at me, called me a name. And then she shot me. I felt this incredible pain here. I heard an explosion and I kind of fell forward. And Ed, Dr. Biondi, ran past me. He said, Christine, put it down. For God's sake. For God's sake. And then she shot him. She just kept shooting. And then he fell. And the way he fell, The way he fell. I knew he was dead.
I have no further questions. Your witness, Mr. Sunquist. We have no questions at this time. You don't even ask her one question? I've told you a hundred times, all I want to do is get her off the stand. She was killing us. Besides, what the hell am I going to ask her? She's already told the jury she spent the night there, she slept with them. They figure, why should she lie about the shooting? But she was lying, and they believed her, and you just... I'm doing the best I can, right? Yeah, well, maybe if you could stay sober for, you know, a minute and a half. Christine, this wasn't my idea, all right? It was your idea, so just get the hell off my back! Okay, pal? You said you wouldn't hurt my mommy. And I wouldn't. I wouldn't, Zach. I promise you. I... I'd never hurt her. Never. I heard you. I know, sweetie, but we were just arguing, okay? It was an argument. I... You have arguments all the time with your sister, don't you? It was, a... it was the same thing. We were just yelling at each other a little bit. It, it wasn't like with your daddy. Daddy yell at mom. I know. Then he tried to hurt her. Did he, Zach? Yeah. But now he's gone. He can't hurt her anymore. No, he can't. Listen, Zach. I know you don't like to talk about this. I know you don't like to think about it. But I'm trying to help you, Mommy. I think you could help her, too. Your Mommy was was afraid of your Daddy, wasn't she? Why was she so afraid? He tried to cut her head off. Oh, Dad! 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 This is crazy! No, baby, this is just a warning. Next time... He's at the neck. Wouldn't even feel it. This time, nothing happened. You just watch it. But I fixed it so she didn't have to be afraid anymore. How did you fix it, Zach? You, what do you mean, you fixed it? Tell me. Now, look, listen, Zach. You have to trust me, okay? I want to help your mommy. Now. I gotta talk to you. Okay? Have a seat. No, no, I'll come. no, we'll talk after the meeting. Hey, please, listen to me. Christine's telling the truth. I mean, this thing was self-defense. We gotta find something. You after the help. meeting, Sunquist. After the meeting. Hello, folks. My name is Judith, and I'm an alcoholic. Hi. Hi. I haven't had a drink for nine years now, but I used to go pretty good. Had a good time, too. I love drinking. I love feeling in control. I love laughing and having a good time. Most of them were good times. Of course, there were some bad times, too, but not bad for me. Bad for my husband, maybe. My kids. My friends. My co-workers. But not bad for me. Not bad enough, anyway. 
And then, suddenly, 11 years ago, it got bad enough. I fell asleep while I was driving one night. I was lucky. Nothing happened to me. But I killed my husband and three children. I didn't stop drinking, of course. Heck, I had a great excuse to drink even more. And I did. Didn't have such a good time anymore, though. No matter how much I drank. Eventually, even I bottomed out and found my way here to this fellowship. A fellowship of recovery. A fellowship of hope. And I found recovery. And I found hope. And if I could find it, anybody can. Sunquist. Sunquist. What can I do to help? Nothing. <clears throat> Nothing here. You've done enough already. Thanks. For God's sake. He wants to help you, Christine, and he can help you. Now, you've got to give him that chance. I'm sorry, I don't have any choice. Your Honor, at this time, we'd like to call Zach Biondi, please. I'll be right back. Daddy used to keep this. Over the fireplace? Yeah, it was hanging over the fireplace. But it hasn't been hanging over the fireplace for a long time now, has it? It's, it's been missing, hasn't it? Huh? Where was it? In my room. And where in your room was it, Zach? In my toy box. Would you please pass that among the members of the jury? Be very careful. It's extremely sharp. Now, Zach, would you tell the people in the court why that very big, very sharp knife was in your toy box among your stuffed animals and your other playthings? Why, Zach? I was hiding it from my daddy. And why were you hiding it from your daddy, Zach? Because he scared mommy with it. Sorry, would you say that again louder? Because he scared mommy with it. And how did he scare mommy with it, Zach? It's okay. Tell us. How did he do it? He chased her with it. He would swing it at her and swing it at her and he said, he said... What did he say, Zach? Tell us what he said. He said he would cut off her head and she wouldn't even feel it. He would cut off her head. She wouldn't even feel it. Thanks, Zach. Your witness. Zach. You didn't like your father very much, did you? I loved my daddy. It's just sometimes he scared me. Did 
Sundquist. Hey. How you doing? Good. God, we haven't no. seen you in a while. Yeah. You look like you could use a double. Yeah. No, 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 no. Uh, no, just, just some coffee. Thanks. I took the liberty of ordering. We don't have much time. <clears throat> Testimony of the kid was good. A nice touch. But it doesn't go to the question of premeditation, does it? <laughs> I'm just trying to get a handle on where you're going, Mr. Sunquist. It's in nobody's interest to drag this out. Uh, yeah, yeah, come on. <laughs> come on, Mrs. Cartier. Now, we're both adults here, huh? <sighs> you gonna offer us some kind of a deal? No, I'm not offering. I just want you to know that the door isn't closed to justice. <sighs> justice. Justice. So that's what this is all about, huh? Justice. Oh, I. Oh, so you 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 go after my sister like she's some kind of crazy mass murderer. You you you, you crucify her in the press. You, you block any kind of legitimate police investigation. You threaten poor old Detective Ayers with his pension, for God's sake. And, and it's all been in the service of justice. Ah, I'm sorry, Miss Gardner. I've suddenly lost my appetite. Well, I hope you enjoyed that, pal, because it was really stupid. place is huge. <laughs> um, my wife was in the hospital uh, uh, three or four months ago. She left some stuff here. I've been trying to find it. I, I've been to the office. I've been to the nurse's station. Look no further. I'm your man. Oh, that's great. What's your name? Uh, Brady. Dolores Brady. Hang on. I'll check. Okay. Room number? Uh, yeah, I think... Uh, 1102, room 1102. How you spell that? B-R-A-D-Y, Brady. Wheelchair to admitting, please. Wheelchair to admitting. One blouse, one skirt? Yeah, that's it. Sign right here. All yours now. Thanks a lot. Well, counsel, shall we proceed? Mr. Sunquist. Mr. Sunquist. Well, Your Honor, uh... Miss 
Brady. In your previous testimony, you stated that you were standing on the other side of the garage, some distance away from Mrs. Biondi when she shot you. Is that correct? Yes, sir. About how far would that be, would you say? 15 feet, 20 feet, 25 feet? I would say 20 feet. 20 feet. Now, what were you wearing at the time? A green blouse and skirt. They would have been pretty badly bloodstained, I would think. Is that correct? Yes, sir, they were. Mm -hmm. Where are those garments? I don't know. They were ruined. You didn't give them to the police? No, sir. You were wearing? Objection. Your Honor, we don't know anything about the chain of custody of these garments. She's already said she doesn't know where they were. Your Honor, it's a simple question. Was she wearing this blouse? The witness may answer whether it's her blouse or not. That is my blouse. Thank you. No further questions at this time. Miss Cardio? We'd like to call Police Detective Ayers to the stand, please. No, sir, we never saw the blouse. We never asked her for it. Well, why not? I mean, wouldn't this garment have considerable value as evidence in this investigation? Your Honor, he's asking him to speculate. Your Honor, Detective Ayers is an experienced police officer who has conducted hundreds of important investigations. Now, it is the contention of the defense that the original investigation of this case was inadequate, woefully inadequate. Now, this led to a wrongful indictment and a wrongful prosecution. Detective Ayers, at a considerable risk to his career, is willing to testify to this effect. Your Honor, Detective Ayers is a loose cannon in the police department. His incompetence and disloyalty have been demonstrated time and time again. His testimony will be prejudicial and irrelevant to this case. Mr. Sundquist, if this is going where I think it's going, I want to withdraw the jury. Bailiff, show them out. Proceed, Mr. Sundquist. Detective Ayers, would you please tell the court the possible relevance that this garment might have to this investigation? Well, the two witnesses directly contradicted each other. Miss Brady claimed she was shot at a distance. Mrs. Biondi said she fired in self-defense at point-blank range. So we would examine the garment for gunshot residues and powder burns. But in this investigation, no attempt was made to locate this garment. No, sir. Now, Detective Ayers, did you continue this investigation on your own after this case was brought to trial? Yes, sir, I did. Why did you do that? Why, sir? Uh, it's my job. I like doing my job. Detective Ayers, did you receive any communication about your effort to, to do your job? from anyone connected with this trial. Your Honor, I... Answer the question, Detective Ayers. I did. I was ordered to desist. You were ordered to desist in this investigation. By whom, sir? By the Assistant District Attorney. Your Honor, this is entirely improper. And I can explain what happened. Sit down, Mrs. Cartier. Officer, I am sure you'll be asked for a full report on this in another forum. At which time, Mrs. Cartier, you'll have an opportunity to explain your actions. Now, getting back to the matter at hand, 
Detective Ayers, I assume that you found Miss Brady's blouse during the course of your unofficial investigation. With the assistance of Mr. Sudquist. Yes, Your Honor, I did. What did you do then? I took the garment to the police forensics laboratory where they ran the standard tests. Powder burns and gunshot residues were found in this area right next to the bullet hole at the abdomen. Indicating what? Indicating that the victim could not be more than a foot from the weapon at the time it was discharged. So she couldn't have been on the other side of the garage some, what, 20 feet away? No, sir. That would have been impossible. Mr. Sundquist, you will repeat your questions of Detective Ayers with regards to the forensic evidence only for the benefit of the jury. Bailiff, please call the district attorney and tell him I wish to meet with him in my chambers after we finish today. Now bring in the jury, please. so sorry. I know that's not enough to say, but it's the truth. I am just so, so sorry. You know, it's parents' job to protect their children, but sometimes, no matter what we do, we fail. You loved him very much. You tried to stop him. You tried to make him happy. But we didn't. No, honey, we couldn't. But, Mom, I didn't help you. I didn't even try. You did the very best that you could. You were scared. But weren't you scared, too? Yeah. I was. But it's time to go on with our lives. All the worrying and pretending are over now. It's not all over yet, Mom. I know, honey, but no matter what happens, even if I have to go away for a little while, I will still be there for you. Always. Please remember that. I just want you to know that... I love you, too. Very, 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 very. Has the jury reached its verdict? Yes, Your Honor, we have. Will the defendant please rise? As to the charge of murder in the first degree, premeditated murder, we find the defendant not guilty. <sighs>
watch yourself, honey. You never know what might happen. called. I would have had the maid in. I did call. Your phone's been disconnected. I was wondering why I hadn't heard from the collection agencies lately. How long have you been living in your office? Oh, I don't know. A couple of weeks. God. Don't worry, sis. It's just, uh, just temporary. I guess they're going to throw me out of here, too. <laughs> You're worse, Perry. A lot worse. Yeah, come on, Chris. What's up? You, you, you didn't come all the way across the bay just to call me a drunk. You're my brother. I was scared when I couldn't reach you. I mean, it's been so long since I've seen you. Yeah, it hasn't been that long. A year. Can't be a year. The last time you were at my house for dinner was a year ago. The last time we talked on the phone was at least six months ago. And what about all those messages I left on your stupid machine? Okay, okay, all right. Okay, okay, all right. I let things slide a little, eh? Last time I was out there, I didn't exactly cover myself with glory with your family. Oh, thank you, God. I'm sorry, I'd offer you a drink. But there's not enough. Can't you see what you're doing to yourself? I got the best seat in the house. I don't get it, Perry. I mean, you saw what Dad did to himself, to Mom, to us, and you were doing exactly the same thing. I just don't understand. Chris, Chris, do me a favor. Will you stop moving around, okay? Please? Sit down. All right, what's the problem? I'm leaving Ed. What? <laughs> 